where I am. Welcome to PowerCast with PC. I said the ears that God needs are not the ones that are on your face, but they are the ones that in the inner crevices of your soul. The scripture refers to it as your heart. Everybody say heart. Oh, the heart is important. Your heart has to be connected. Your heart has to be connected. Let me tell you why. The heart is necessary to be in the right frequency because God can be saying several different things to several different people at the same time. Just the other day, somebody said, well, well, pastor, this prophet said this, and this prophet said that, and this prophet said this, and this preacher said that. And I listened to 10 different people, and they said God was doing 10 different things. And they said, which one do you think is right? I said, uh, as far as I know, all of them are right. Because the Bible says, number one, we know in part, and we prophesy in part. What you got to ask yourself is, is what part am I connected to? Let me tell you why. Because God can be saying several different things to several different people at the same time. Now, some of us, that messes with our theology because we we don't know the difference between being unified and being the same. We don't know the difference between being unified, being a community, being in all in one place, and not being the same. See, see, most of us don't understand that God wants you to be with me and he wants you to be a part of me, but he wants you to be you and he wants me to be me. What do you mean God can be saying several different things at the same time in the same situation? Well, the Bible teaches us that he told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Because Moses was on the winning side. Y'all ain't talking to me here. He told Pharaoh not to listen. So much so to what the Bible says that the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. Because Pharaoh was on the losing side. He told Aaron, whatever Moses says, you say it. Because Aaron was on the serving side. He told the Israelites, don't you say nothing. You just follow whatever Moses says because they were on the winning side. God can be saying different things to different people in the same situation and it's all right. Y'all don't want to talk to me here. And I'm here to tell the way we are on the winning side. So you got to make sure that you are connected to the voice uh, because whatever God is telling us uh, is taking us to victory. And you better be careful that you ain't following somebody, something that's taking you somewhere that don't line up with your future. Because God gives victory wrapped in the clothing of leadership. I don't see anywhere in scripture where God delivered a people by themselves. Whenever God wanted to bring a people out, he always raised up somebody to take them out. And he didn't raise them up with a gift. He didn't raise them up with a talent. He didn't raise them up with an ability. He always gave them a word. Because one word from the Lord can change an economy. One word from the Lord can change a disease. One word from the Lord can change a family. One word from the Lord can change a mind one word from the Lord can change a heart and who your heart listens to determines the direction of your future if you want to know who has your heart just look at where you are living because where you are living is a reflection of who has your heart because who has your heart can determine your direction and in 2021 I'm here to declare the enemy can touch everything but my heart for thy word have I hid in my So in 2021, I made a decision. I'm going to fight for your heart. I ain't ain't fighting for your head. I'm not fighting for your brain. I just need your heart. Because if I don't have your heart, it's a great possibility that you will be left behind. What do you mean? Well, what if they were leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, Elder Smith, and somebody decided to turn around? 
what would have happened if they were moving in the Red Sea being parted and somebody just and somebody just decided to stop and have a business meeting? What would have happened if Daniel was in the lion's den and said, hold up, God, I need some clarity. What would have happened if the three Hebrew boys uh, were in the lion's den and decided that they weren't sure if they were going to trust God? Let me help you with something. When you are moving at the speed of revelation, you don't have time to decide whether you're going to follow or not. The best thing you can do is do what God says uh, and ask questions about it later. And let me just help tenor you in on a secret. There are some things that I did that didn't make no sense when I did it. It didn't make no sense after I did it. And years later, God brought to my mind that if I had not obeyed him the way he said obey him, as quickly as he said obey him, I would be stuck in the last season of my life. But thank God he doesn't wait for me to figure it out. He just gives me what I need when I need it. And if I decide to trust him, he can do for me in a second what I cannot do for myself in years. I wish I had about two or three people who could testify that serving God has changed my life. There's some stuff that I have that I don't deserve. There's some places I've been that I couldn't afford. There's some stuff that changed that I couldn't have done all because I decided to trust in the Lord with all of my heart. So when God is ready to elevate you, he sends his word. He don't send the check first. He sends the word first. He doesn't send the promotion first. He sends the word first. He doesn't send the connections first. He sends the word first. He doesn't send the ability first. He sends the word first. This is why in this season, season you got to stop settling for a word and get with his word. I said, you got to stop settling for a word and you got to get with his word. Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 21 and verse 15 says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries will not be able to gainsay nor resist. In other words, God says, not only would I give you the word, but when you put my word in your mouth, I put my voice in your mouth. Y'all don't want to talk to me here. I said, when you put my word in your mouth, this is God talking. I'll put my voice in your mouth. Hear this, because God is a spirit. So God's mouth needs a person. And whatever the man or woman of God says must have a witness in your heart in order to gain momentum in your life. So it does me no good to preach about a prosperity you don't believe you can have. It does me no good to preach about a healing you can't believe you can experience. It does me no good to preach about a victory that you're still not sure that you can have. In 2021, whenever the word of the Lord is coming in your life, stop questioning stop guessing stop debating stop talking to it and just start saying amen because amen means it is so and I don't know who I'm preaching to but some of y'all the only thing holding up your word is your amen stop acting like you got it all together when God starts telling you he's about to do something in your life all you got to do is open up your mouth and shout amen point to somebody and say amen this will be your best year, amen. This will be the best day of your life, amen. This will be a year of peace, amen. This year will be a year you're debt free, amen. This will be a year the doctors look at you and become dumbfounded when they don't see what they thought they saw. Somebody ought to say amen, amen, amen. When you wake up, you ought to say amen. Before you go to sleep, you ought to say amen. When you swipe your debit card, you ought to say amen. You ought to have an amen in your soul spirit you ought to have an amen in your belly because whatever the promise of God is it is yay and amen I know what the problem is Jeremiah 17 and verse 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it why is this important because the mind which is your conscience has to do with the heart which is the subconscious. Now, while it is that the mind is active, it is not any more important than the heart. As a matter of fact, y'all ready for this? The mind can only work with what the heart supplies. I'll say that again. 
I said the mind can only work with what the heart supplies. In other words, the thoughts that you think have to come from somewhere. And the thoughts that you actively think come from the thoughts that have been impressed in your heart. So you didn't just decide to think you couldn't have it. You don't think you can have it because that's what's in your. You don't believe it's yours because that's what's in your. Because somehow, some way, maybe you were small, maybe you were a little bigger, whether it was your environment, whether it was your parents, whether it was somebody you loved, whether it was somebody you trusted, kept telling you what you couldn't do, what you wouldn't do, what you can't do, what you'll never do. And they kept telling you that long over and over and over and over again until eventually you started believing what they told you. And one day you looked in the mirror and you didn't believe what God said, you believed what they said. So you got to touch your, you got to deal with your heart because your heart can hear the truth. It'll compromise it. The heart will hear what a person didn't say. And a compromised heart is just like a compromised immune system. The immune system was built to be able to handle anything in your body that is foreign. But when the immune system is compromised, you no longer can depend upon your body and you must depend on someone's science. And the problem with men's science is that it may fix one thing. Y'all ain't talking to me here. But it will tear up something else. This is why before God sends money, he sends truth. Because he's trying to deal with your heart. Let me tell you why he wants to deal with your heart. Because if he can get your heart right, then you won't have to lean on people like you used to. Because you'll start to see that promotion doesn't come from men. Promotion doesn't come from the north. It doesn't come from the south. It doesn't come from the west. It comes from God. See, if we can get your heart together, then you'll stop looking outside of you for what God has already done in you. Can I tell you why you're dangerous? Can I tell you why I'm dangerous? Can I tell you why this church is dangerous? We are dangerous because God is raising up a people that no longer has to depend on the world for what God wants to do. In our, y'all ain't talking to me here. For we know that greater is he that's in me somebody say in me in me in me in me in me somebody say it like you mean it in me in me that means prosperity is in me that means joy is in me that means peace is in me that means power is in me that means authority is in me I don't have to wait for nobody I don't have to hope nobody can bring me out I don't have to hope for a stimulus I don't have to hope for a politician I don't have to hope for a Democrat I don't have to hope for a Republican I don't even have have to hope for an independent I don't have to hope for a country for my hope is built y'all gonna help me preach or what point to somebody and tell them it's already in you ah but you just got to get that heart right ah the wicked heart is changed in worship ah this is why worship must become a premium for us this year we can't afford to just come and sing songs and move on the devil is a lie we got to worship until we feel something shifting in our heart we got to worship until we feel something shifting in our belly saying now is the time for the word I'm praying for the day that we come in this sanctuary and worship so that it's hard for us to get ourselves together because something is happening in the hearts of men and something is happening in the hearts of women that they say God is up to something and I don't know who I'm preaching to but I keep hearing the Holy Ghost say 2021 I'm sending revival I'm sending a revival to your finances. I'm sending a revival to your spirit. I'm sending a revival to the dead places. 2020 tried to kill everything in you and about you. But God said he's sending revival this year. Somebody ought to wave your hands and say revival. The wicked heart is changed in worship. And the heart is persuaded through repetition. In other words, in order for my heart to be changed... I got to keep talking to my heart over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So when I wake up in the morning, I look at myself. I say, you are prosperous. You are blessed. You are the head and not the tail. You are the above and not beneath. You are the lender.
lender and not the borrower. And then you go to sleep and got to wake up and do it all over again. Because you got years and years of junk in your heart that's trying to fight the word of God that's already been preached to you.